Okay, welcome YouTubers. Uh, today's little video, uh, I'm not sure if I've gotten to the point where I show you that I got a CNC plasma table, but I did. And I have uh, uh, somebody donated or a friend of mine gave me this tabletop. It's about uh, an inch thick. It's a Home Depot sort of uh, butcher block top, I guess, that you can go and buy. Um, inch thick. It's about uh, a little over two feet wide, 25 and 5 eighths or something like that by 60 inches long, so five feet long. And um, I was watching the the YouTube videos from uh, Lift Art Studios, and they made this pretty cool table for their conference room. This is not a conference room table. It'll be just for something in, uh, in the house, because I don't actually have a working desk. I'm out in the office in the garage or whatever right now. Anyways, uh, so I thought I would give my hand uh, sort of inspiration from the the guys there at Lift Art Studios. So shout out to you guys. Thanks for sharing all your content. And I ended up uh, getting the same plasma table as you guys anyways. So long story short, I just wanted to kind of go through uh, the modeling here in SolidWorks. I'm using SolidWorks 2020. Um, and uh, how I put together. And then we'll go... Uh, in the next video to making a drawing for it and then we'll uh, we'll make the cut files and um, then we'll burn this thing out and uh, we'll make it so uh, <clears throat> I guess I'm sort of jumping 10 steps ahead but let's take a look at how this thing is put together so I started off with just measuring this tabletop and figuring out how big I wanted to make it, uh, how big I wanted to make the, how tall I wanted to make the base, which is about 30 inches tall. And uh, first I actually made these legs. So um, I'll just open one of those pieces up and uh, you can kind of follow along. So this is, um, I'm not sure if you could follow my cursor over here on the left hand side, there's a, the uh, tree and um, I'll show you the sketch that I made for that. So just a real simple, okay, I know I needed it 30 inches tall and it'll end up being a little bit more than 30 inches because uh, I'm cutting this out of 10 gauge, which is uh, 0.1345, just over an eighth of an inch. Um, and so it'll end up being you know, uh, 30 and a quarter plus or, you know, plus a little bit or whatever, when I end up wrapping the top with those flanges that you saw in the, in the, uh, uh, wrong, in this, uh, this video, this section here, right? There's, it gets sort of wrapped with uh, a piece of flat bar. So let's go back here to sketch the leg. Sorry, I'm jumping around. So I basically drew a box. That's where you can see these uh, uh, these lines here. It's a center line box that you can get from um, up here in the menu tree. Uh, maybe I shouldn't go through it so detailed, but if anybody really want cares, then let me know, and I'll I'll maybe jump through it a little bit more detailed than that. But anyways, I usually like to start at the origin so you can see all the the planes. I usually keep them on uh, front, top, right, and start at the origin make my box in this case and dimension as much stuff off of the center as I can so there's not a whole bunch of references to each other um, and then I just drew some circles similar to the lift art guys again shout out um, but before I did that I I threw a an ellipse in here um, there's the center point of the ellipse and um, constrained it to some arbitrary point out here. I can't remember what I chose. I think, anyways, I, I chose a point out here, how big I wanted to make it, and uh, probably should dimension that anyways, just to see. There you go. So it's not really that great. Let's make it four. Um, and it made it uh, tangent to this this line here. 
just so that I had some other reference points to tie it in. And um, um, then I put my circles in, sort of randomly picked some sizes that I thought looked good and centered them out just by eye. And then uh, added a, a radius to those sharp corners that were there before. And uh, that gave me the starting point of the leg and because it's pretty thin. Um, uh, let's see here. Go back up to the leg, the table assembly. Uh, because it's pretty thin, I needed a way to form, um, to sort of stiffen this thing up a little bit so it's not so wonky and wants to bend. So what I did then was I made this formed flange thing by basically uh, going in and making a sketch. And I'll show you that. It says extrude thin. Um, and I basically made the assembly of this uh, leg assembly thing here, whatever we're called, leg assembly at the top. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Leg assembly here in the in the tree. And I threw in the leg, which is what we're looking at here right now, that the first piece that I showed you. And then I made this sketch and I inserted another blank component or another component part that I already called leg flange formed and it was blank and made it up so that everything fell in the center as before. And then I just drew up, did this, uh, where is it? Um, convert entities, convert entities. So you, when you do the convert entities, it'll ask you if you want to, it says up here, no external references. So that means it's not, you could take it apart and it's not going to refer to this main piece. Um, you won't have a link back to it in essence. So just made a line. And then um, when you go to uh, make the part, let's take a look. Um, you end up with this curvy thing, right? And so we can take this and flatten it and get an overall length later on. And I haven't done that yet, but let's take a look how it's made. So it can, sh basically it shows the line and, um, with these little toggle buttons, you can, uh, get the thing to fall on one side of the line or the other. I'm not sure if you can see that. So I want it to fall the outside of the line. And I said, well, I want to use, in this case, eighth inch or 0.125 thick material to make this bend. And I want it to be, it says up here, two inches thick. And I picked mid plane so that it basically extrudes it from both sides and it falls right in the middle. So that it helps me later on when I go to assemble things that it, um, I can just pick the planes to assemble and I don't have to pick individual features and remember how thick it was because I originally started off with this thing being three inches thick and so when I if I were to take that and put it into the leg assembly here and measured if I were to put it in and have a measurement from here to this face um, of an inch and a half offset and then later on I decided like I did to change it to two inches wide uh, then I'd have to go back and then change this but because I just made it, it to the, uh, you can see the mates down here. I like I say, I'm not sure how much anybody gives a shit about how, how I go to do this stuff. But anyways, it's assembled with a mate plane to plane uh, when it gets put together. So, and the nice thing is I only had to put one in. Because um, you see this mirror thing down here. So... Um, you, you, if I put one in and I made it perfectly to a plane, I can just take and take that piece and go up here into a pattern, click component pattern. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, way up there. It's in the menu tree. Mirror components. And then uh, just mirror it on that plane and boom, you got the other one in there and do the same with the top and bottom. In this case here, I installed both pieces, which is basically just a 
flat piece. So let's rebuild that and save it because I did change that dimension on the center piece, right? So that takes care of that leg and how I put that together. Like I say, I'm sort of rushing, rushing through some of this and uh, you guys can tell me how much of this nonsense you like or not. So basically I get, it takes care of both of these pieces. And then this strut, what I'm calling a strut, basically something to stop that table legs from racking back and forth. So it sort of ties it back together. And then in this case here, I'm just showing uh, the YouTube logo as a cutout, which I might put in. Um, or maybe I'll put a crafty farmer one in there or whatever. I don't know. But um, I haven't cut out a YouTube logo yet. So maybe I'll just do it anyways, just to have something. And then um, I can just take this and lay it out. Um, that's why I want to have the the drawing in it. Maybe it's not necessary in this case because I know exactly what I'm doing or what I want to do. I don't think I need to make a, a full drawing of the thing. So maybe the drawing will be a little bit light in some of the details. But anyways, I'll just jump over here to this because I don't want this video to get too crazy long. It's a friggin' flat piece of steel that I said. I measured the uh, the distance here. I think I made that uh, um, four inches or something like that to the bottom. And so that gives a, no, I think it's six inches, pardon me, uh, from from the bottom of that circle to the center, or th three inches, holy cow brain. From the bottom there to the center, so that's six inches span, so I made this five. And I can still go in and change this if I want to make it a little bit bigger or not. So the overall height on this center piece is five. And when I top the top and bottom with eighth, well, it'll end up being five and a five and a quarter overall, right? So basically this strut is blank with just an assembly of that flat piece that I showed you earlier. And then I made these tie plates similar to the Similar to the uh, lift art guy, so remember, uh, uh, imitation is the best form of flattery. So, uh, not that I'm trying to steal something. And your table, their table was a little bit different, but it's a very similar idea. They were making a quite a bit bigger table with some uh, three sixteenths plate, um, and they had a, a formed piece in the middle that looked kind of cool with some more cutouts in it. Um, and so, um, I'm not going to do that. And I just want to have a fairly plain thing in the middle. Um, and the, the bonus about doing this, uh, for example, in, in SolidWorks, I can say, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor here on the far left, I can assign a material to it. And so I said, it's just mild steel, A36 and same with all this stuff. A36, A36. Um, and so you can also go and get a weight on this thing. Now you can't see this. It's in the other screen right now, so I'll drag it over. But this whole thing, uh, without any weld in there, which will add some, it's 18 and a half pounds, a little over 18 and a half pounds. So by the time we weld this thing out, you know, she's going to be tipping the scales at almost 20. You know, we'll just stagger skit, stitch this top and the bottom on and uh, weld this end piece on. So the tie plate is basically a little bit heavier piece of plate. It's three eighths flat bar. Um, and I don't think I'm going to cut this out on the plasma table. But uh, three eighths flat bar with a couple of holes drilled in it and they'll be drilled and tapped. And yeah, they're going to go blind in here. So... When I end up having the other piece lap on top, so three eighths plus an eighth is half, um, but it's not quite, it's a little bit more than an eighth. So as long as I tap this and I put in a half inch three eighths screw, it's not quite what we would normally do for, uh, we would want to have about one and a half times uh, 
the bolt size as far as thread engagement, but in this case here, it's the forces are going to be not really big. So um, I think one times the diameter is fine. Uh, so we're using a three eighths bolt, and the plate is three inches thick, three eighths thick. So that's the one times the diameter. Um, sort of off the top of my head, I could make this out of half plate too. But anyway, so that's where we're at right now. So where was I? So this guy will get welded on. I don't really care that the backside will get end up welded shut. It doesn't matter. Um, so we might have a little bit less than three eighths thread engagement in the very end, but it's fine for what it's going to do. Um, and that's that. So we assemble it the same way, right? This piece goes in, the blank piece goes in, everything gets mated, uh, by planes for the most part as much as possible and then in this case here i want this on this end so these end faces all get made it up and that takes care of that like I say i'm sort of short form rushing through this and so that i can kind of like I say get this table this thing window this video not being so crazy freaking long so i put the strut in and just default assemble it to the planes so when you do that and you when you go bring it in um, it just automatically mates see like this plane is what's the plane in, that formed the strut assembly and the plane for the overall assembly are exactly the same same with the top and the top and the right and the right. Everything's made it exactly. So it also helps you kind of see if there's some weird anomalies in your design, like when you go look at the bolt holes and see, oh, is it actually right in the center? Yep, it is. Um, and I made the holes in the uh, plasma cut piece a little bit bigger. I made them 7 16 so that there'd be some clearance to the hole. And um, uh, the uh, tie plate ones right now are at a quarter, so they're about an eighth under, so that there'll be enough room for a drill tapping. So, where are we? That basically is that. And then I took uh, the YouTube logo from uh, an image I found online, and I could cut it out into the plate um but then i would have to put some little tie pieces in here to the triangle it might look a little goofy um so i decided well in this case here i'll just cut out the letters and the play button or whatever you want to call it and place it in here so i use oh, i already closed the program so the, the thing that I used to go and uh, take this logo, because I got, a, I picked up a, the logo that I found was a PNG file. So I took it into Paint, Paint, MS Paint, saved it as a JPEG. Then I bring it into, there's a few different steps. Um, I bring it into this software called Enroute, which is what I use for generating the CNC cut file for a lot of stuff. But anyways, and I go file, import, and then I go YouTube, and I bring it in, and it's just this picture right now. And... I go uh, with the logo selected. See, it's not selected now. And you can see the little dots all the way around it. And I selected the logo. And I go up to the draw menu and vectorize bitmap. And then I say over here in the corner, I'll bring it over and you can see. I just say, okay. And then you can see you still have the picture, which I'm selected on. I'm going to drag it out of the way. But then down below, you could see another form of the logo, which is the DXF, or 
will be the DXF. Now, I don't know how big this is. And I know how big my... Um, I know how big my um, piece is that I'm going to put it into, which is uh, five inches tall. So I want it to be a little bit less. So I'm going to scale this and it shows the dimensions down here. It shows that it's 32 inches long, seven inches tall. And I want to keep everything proportional. And I'm going to just change this to four and then apply. And it takes a whole thing to scale and shrinks it down and you can see that it made the length of it it's almost 18 inches long when it's all said and done so that's that so then i export it up here i don't know if you can see it or not export as a dxf and in order to get i just drag that out of the way in order for me to get it into um SolidWorks, let me just go through that because it's kind of a, a bit of a pain. So I'll just do it a dummy, a dummy version. And so I say a file or pardon me, screwed in boss base front. Insert. Uh, oops. I'm scared. Insert uh, DXF, it says. And planar face, I said front. Okay, front. And then, uh, where are we? And then I gotta go find the thing. Um, where is the thing? Anyways, I find it. Uh, DXF YouTube. And this is the import screen. I just keep on clicking next and finish. And then it sort of puts it way the frig out there, eh? So this is how big it is, but it's not mated to, like I said, the center planes. And you can see over here in the screen it um, sort of shows like a, a do not enter thing, right? Okay, back again. Sorry, I had to step away there for a second. Okay, so um, it shows with this little do not enter sort of sign. And the way you have to do is turn it into a make edit sketch. So then you can actually do something with it. You can go edit the sketch. And what I like to do is put some center lines in, horizontal, infinite length, and I'm going to pick that center piece on the triangle, and I'm going to put another one in vertical, and I know that that is about, because I measured it on the other one, that's about the center. It's pretty darn close. So then I'm going to select everything, including my lines. And I'm going to control hold that after I've dragged and selected the rest of it. And then I'm going to go up to tools, sketch tools, move. And it says here, there's a little checkbox that says keep relations. So I'm going to select the spot that I want, that I care about. And I think before I had put a mark in here so I probably should do that again at the intersection of the two lines and it showed intersection there so I'll do this selection thing again sorry guys I'm making this into a long-winded thing I'm forgetting all these steps insert no tools sketch tools move Keep relations, start point, and that's going to be the point that I'm going to pick. And see, point defined. And now I'm, you can see the whole thing will move around. Um, and then I'm going to drag it to the origin. 
boom, it sort of snaps there. And then that's that. And now I can click on the sketch and up in the corner, I can go to extruded boss base, select my size, 0.1345, which is 10 gauge. And I'm gonna say, okay. And ba bada bing, bada boom. I have um, a 3D shape. And uh, that's basically how I did that other one. But I'm just going to cancel this because I already got one. Don't save changes. Boom, here we are. And then that lets me easily place it, the same planes, everything in the center exactly as it should be. And here we are. So, um, like I say, this is my first version, first time making one of these kind of videos. I'm not sure if anybody likes this or not, but... Uh, that is that next video because this one's probably getting an awful bit long i will go and uh i will go and uh make the drawing for uh some of these pieces just roughly or maybe i'll just go and make the dxfs um if you guys want to see the content on how to make the drawing and uh, flatten this thing out and whatnot else let me know and SolidWorks isn't the software that I usually use at work um, I usually use Creo um, so uh, it's not my my usual thing that I I fiddle around with this is just sort of the uh, home gamer version expensive home gamers version anyways uh, if you like it, like, comment, subscribe, all that good jazz. And uh, certainly give me some comments on uh, whether or not you want to see any more of this content or whether or not you want to even see the video on making the drawings for all this stuff. Okay, guys. Thanks again for watching. Cheers.